I can't see any reason why it shouldn't. I was on the last two matches yesterday. You played Tom Jones and then the last one, you caught a final. My word, you were playing well. I'll give you that, but... Yeah, no, I'm happy. I am happy the way I'm playing. I'm not going to say I'm going to sit here and say I'm going to win it. You know, we've got uh, the ever-consistent best player in the world, Tom Cousins, on the other side of the draw. So, you know, he's the man to beat at the end of the day. Um, we've got Chess Graham, I think, in the, in the semis, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So He's from my neck of the woods down in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. He's uh, had some great results himself. In one of his previous matches, 5-1 down to Connor Tracy, came back and won 7-5, so certainly not to be underestimated, as is none of these players here. Yeah, and when, he, when I got here on the Thursday, he was, he was in the practice room next to me and he was um, messing around with his tip. He was really struggling, actually. Um, so I'm a bit surprised that he's had such a good run because normally when you've got tip issues, especially at this level, you know, you're going to struggle. But he's obviously found a way. And like I said in the uh, interview last night, he's just one of those players that just won't go away. He's, you know, a great match player. So, yeah, I've got it all to do. But this should be a good game. Two, two great players. Shane obviously had that winning streak in the first year. Three in a row, was it? Unbelievable. Yeah, and I think Josh is um, it's probably underachieved, in my opinion. I think he's top quality, Josh. And I think he probably should have won more. But, um, yeah, this should be, a, should be a good one. I think it will be Josh's bad luck commentator because I've never seen him win yet when I've been on the commentary cards. <laughs> so. Blimey. Shane, however, is a, a player I know well. Again, he's, he's from down in the southwest. Played for England for many years now. Really solid performer. The safe cracker. Yeah, I think um, the black obviously goes bottom right, so it's, it should be a nice, comfortable finish. It's just he's played a couple of balls off balls. Um, just frees that left-hand side of the table up even more. So we just screw this one into the middle and then just screw down the line for the black. That's the way I'd go anyway, because you don't want to play the one in the corner now and risk leaving too much angle on the yellow. The way you were going, you'd have been on frame three by now. <laughs> Everyone's got their own styles of play. They have yeah. indeed. And if I'm having a slow match, then you know something's wrong with my game. So if they're over pretty quick, that means I'm, you know, I'm playing quite well and playing to my speed. So... It's a bit of thing. I was chatting to um, Aaron Davis yesterday and going about speed of players, and he said, he said, I need those extra couple of seconds. He said, just to double, in, in my mind, to double check everything that I'm doing the right thing, and it, it's just a process. He said, when it gets to 15 seconds a shot, he said, he said I, I need to practice it because it really hurts him. Yeah, and even the fastest players, and I'm probably one of the fastest, I struggle with the 15 seconds. So, you know, I hate to think wh how other play players see it because, yeah. you know, I'm down on the shot very quick and, you know, play my shot within a second or two sometimes. Other players need five seconds just to get down. Ooh, maybe that was tighter than we thought or he either just queued across it and missed it badly. But first mistake, yeah. yeah. So, well, he's got a full pocket, but he's not got the far jaw. And, yeah, you could see that would have, have gone in off a far jaw. So it just goes to show if you don't get close to the, to the ball... Even if you have just got the middle of the bag, sometimes it can. It's not easy. No, it's you know, sometimes you, you do. Like I like to play those sort of shots off the near jaw. You know, some yeah. people like to play off the far jaw. So, so Shane will uh, be like in this situation off Josh's break, chance to break serve if you like. Yeah, going back to speed of shot is. I think when you play fast, you, you eliminate that little bit of doubt. I think Cause I, I used to play quite quickly. Not quite as fast as you play, but it's just it's the speed your mind works. That's I, it. You know, with the you know Chris Mellon, when the balls break open, and, went, and the same with yourself after split, you can see it immediately, mm. pretty much. Apart from saying, well, okay, I'll just double check that. It's probably best to go that way because else I could snoop myself over here. Blah blah blah. But it's all done pretty quickly. But certain players need to really analyse it before they make their decisions. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I mean. Everyone's got their own styles, so whatever works for them. You know, mine is just playing ultra quick. People criticise it, saying, oh, that's why you missed the ball, because no. you rushed it. But it's never the case of me rushing a ball. No. You know, we all miss balls for different reasons, but it's not as simple as, oh, you rushed it. Or it's a process. It's it, mm. You know, when you try and replicate it every shot, 
you know, go through the same little approach to, to every shot. And you watch like players, I don't know, Lee Kendall back in the day had a very particular, meticulous way that he would address every shot and he did it and just rinse and repeat, if you like. Mm. And he was great at it. I think when, when I'm playing well, like, I've kind of given myself the pot, so I just want to just get that pot out of the way and think of the next shot. Yeah. You know, whereas if you're not playing well, you, you're worrying about the pot sometimes as well, so you're putting the concentration into that. But when you're when you are floating, flying around, you just know the pot's going to go in. So you, you kind of just get down, knock it in, and think about how, just how you're going to go about the rest of the clearance. And I think that's why I probably play quick, because I just want to get that. There's no point wasting time on an easy pot. No. So I just get out of the way and, um, yeah, think about the rest of the clearance as quick as possible. That keeps that just keeps my mind active. If I start dwelling, then I'll just lose concentration. Yeah. Well, this black for... First blood for Shane Thompson. And in it goes. Yeah, he's a funny player because he looks like... Because he's got a kind of jabby and jerky and gets up off his shot. Cute kind of cue action. You feel like sort he's of lines up very fast, doesn't he, with the, with the actual, mm. you know, his, his cue action. And if he's got a tricky pot, you feel like, you know, he's got a good chance of missing this because of that action. But actually, he... <laughs> He gets them all, so... He does. You know, that's what I mean. Act, you know, we all have different styles of play, and... Yeah. You know, that's that's what that's the way he plays. Yeah, it's when you've got so, some like a shot that's required more delicacy, and, w and when he's queuing up like that, because a couple of times I thought, well, he's going to overhit this because he's going to get digging too much, and, he, and it's sort of as he just just stops himself hitting it really hard at the right time, and it's, yeah. it's quite a unique cue action. Yeah, Shane's got quite a nice layer here. I'll probably play both of these. I always played it in the opposite middle. I always missed, them. missed that by a long way, actually. No, wasn't expecting that. Have another look. And I missed it See, it's so easy for people to just say that, oh, he's, he's took his eye off the pot. But actually, he's probably he's trying to pot that as wide as he can just to make sure he gets the white over there and, you know, and not brush the, the, the red, if you like. Yeah, it's gone far draw. Mm. Well, a grateful Josh Kane at the table. Dispatch these two yellows at the top, and then... For me, I think I'd probably just get, get on the plant and play it down the rail. I don't think you really need to move. I think if no. you're right behind it, it's quite straight. Yeah, but the key shot is this one, to make sure he leaves himself. He see, he's... It's not ideal. Up. You want to be low because you can just stun over near the middle and get as close as you can. When you're using the cushions, especially on these main tables, you just don't really know how they're going to bounce, to be honest. That's the way I see it. And obviously the harder you hit it, the bigger throw you get off, of, off the cue ball. So, um, yeah, if he's above the middle pocket here, it makes the plant missable. So, um, yeah, we'll see where he lands. There you go. And that's why that previous shot was key to be low on it. So you can just stun down and not, not use the cushions. I think you may have had a little kick because the white seemed to sort of didn't go anywhere forward, did it? No. It's either that or he just didn't hit it low, uh, high enough on the cue ball. But um, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. But these are the tiny fractions. Just been either side, the wrong side of that, that yellow. A second ago, you know, if he does miss this plant, he'll be, he'll be annoyed and it could cost him a frame just for that tiny little error. But when we talk about these tables and how big they play, it's shots like this that on an outside table or, you know, on the old Supremes, they're, tr they're doubly as hard because, and you're getting punished for your, for your positional error. Whereas on here, you know, you're still probably going to make it, you know, because you know it's just going to slide in. Yeah. Um, and that's where you know, the game does kind of need to be made a little bit harder, in my opinion. I don't know how they're going to do it, but um, that was just a just a good example there. Still a good plant, obviously. Yeah, nice and tidy from Josh. Down goes the black. And we are level. So yeah, it's a big game. Go to Carrow Road a bit, do you? I try to, but I used to have a season ticket years ago, but obviously um, weekends are 
pretty tough to get out. Um, but I'll try and get to a few away games. If I'm away for Paul, I'll, I'll sometimes get a ticket. I managed to go to the Stoke away game a couple of weeks ago when we were there for a, for a tournament. And I just so happened I got beat. So I went to the game. We won 3-0. That was, that was a great a great atmosphere. Yeah. There's nothing better than away games. No, I've travelled around a bit <coughs> in the old football from time to time. Who do you, who's your team? Man United, unfortunately. At the moment, not very mm. good. I used to go to quite a few away European games. They were always a good crack. Yeah, I bet. Not much chance of that many for any, any time soon, no. especially not Champions League anyway. But well, Shane Thompson now trying to restore his lead on these reds. Pretty open, Sean. Yeah, it was a good split by Josh. All the balls went everywhere and nothing down. But a few dry breaks this week. And not just because they've been poor breaks. I mean, they've been really crunch breaks and then just everything colliding into each other near pockets and nothing going in. Mm. Makes no sense half the time, doesn't no. it? But yeah, these are about as nice as you can get. The only danger is... Um, that. Well, well, that's a danger now. <laughs> that is... That is well, that has just come out as bad as it as it possibly can. That ball goes nowhere. An absolute look of complete disgust. I was going to say the only danger is the is the red nearest the bottom right hand corner. Just to you, know, you want to be low on that really, rather than mm, sort of above the black. It's still tricky to do that as well. Mm. Well, he can get there now, but I don't know how he's going to go about getting that red out. That's a nice shot. So behind the yellow, on the, near the cushion. No, I don't, I don't think he can get the, get the cannon. I think he's got to go direct. Yeah, like that. He's just got to get as close to that yellow on the on the right hand side cushion as possible, and just try and flick the yellow and red. But he has to land on it as well. So that's how. Yeah, he's just caught the yellow. Mm. Nothing there. But what did look a pretty I mean, easy finish. That was that bad. That was that bad of a sort of outcome that, that there's a case to say he could have tried to leave the double into the top left-hand corner. Obviously, the yellow he's nearest to the left there is kind of where you'd want the white ball. Um, but that cannon wasn't easy. But he might just try and play a thin cut double. Oh, that's close. I, th I, th I think he time fell there. I'm, it's it's more of a guess, but I I, I'm I did notice actually the the sound <coughs> when the beeps are going, they go slightly before the numbers change on the screen. So whether they go by the beep or by the numbers changing, I don't mm. know. But there's that fr slight delay. Well, they're going to double check it. That's for sure. Obviously, it makes a, a huge difference because Josh will then have ball in hand. Yeah, and I'll just place the white next to the red to the left. Play that one down the cushion, as that is the awkward ball. Absolutely. Although, if it isn't ball in hand, <laughs> you'd still want to be yellows, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But it just means he hasn't got to go and get on that ball or, or, yeah. or free it from the rail. It was very, very close. This will be milliseconds As Shane Thompson awaits He's called the, the outcome I did I did think it was just now then Josh Kane ball in hand he's immediately gone towards where you suggested Sean just wondering how easily that yellow goes to right middle just below the middle yep you want to be Right, quite really. close to it. Yeah. If you get a little angle in it, you pot this at the bottom, you get a li little an angle on that over there now, and get a shot of it as early as possible. You yeah, you definitely play for it now. Looks fairly comfortable from there, but not from there. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Just drift into the, well, depending on if he feels he can screw it, but it, if not, just drift into the yellow above it. 
Might be just slide off that and it'd be on one of the other two yellows at the top as well. Mm. He's screwing that out so he's confident. He's perfect on the top top yellow, I think. You can drop that in and play the other one into the middle and then come back down for these last two. Did Josh lose first round in the last event? Because I... He did. Yeah, I didn't, hadn't really seen him this weekend. And I know Shane um, lost to my roommate, Peter Mullaney, in the first event. So we'll both be desperate to have a run in this event. That's quite funny because... Just before he played Peter Mullaney, I was in the lift coming down with Shane, with Q in hand. I said, who have you got? He said, don't know, don't look at draws. I went, really? He well, said, yeah. He said, I'll just turn up and destroy him. Funnily <laughs> enough. looked at the score and he lost 7-3. Just before I left to come down to commentate on this, uh, Pete came up to the room and he said, oh, just send Shane. Just got in the lift and uh, just to make conversation, he said, oh, who have you got? He go, don't know. That was it. End of conversation. So that's obviously his attitude to, you know, yeah. to, the, to the draw. But I'm pretty sure you would know who you're playing. I think that might be a... That'd be a yeah. You might not a care. A bit of psychology there. Yeah, you might not care who you're playing, but you, you still want to know who you're playing. I mean, there are players that you'd rather not play. I'd, you know, if I was still playing now, you'd, you'd want to avoid... Well, somebody that's playing well for a start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I was in the, in the draw now, we'd want to be playing you, to be honest. All Tom Cousins. But it's, there are certain players... I mean... They're all top professionals. Mm. But the way I sort of judge it is there are play the, the top players just make that mistake a lot less often than the other ones. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's like you're playing against yourself before you can beat your opponents. You've got to beat yourself in, the, in, the, in your head. Mm. And then you've got to beat your opponents. So it's two against one. But you've got the likes of Jack and Chris. I think they play full time now. Well, I know Chris obviously does, but I don't know if Jack does. But I know they play a lot. Um, so they're going to remain consistent. Um, and fair play to him, you know, if they, if they can do that. But 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 busiest man in pool, Chris, mm. if you ask him. But plays 450 days a year. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of us players obviously have jobs and can't, just can't dedicate, you know, as much as we'd like. So no. Who knows what's on the horizon with Ultimate Pool. Maybe, maybe that'll be a reality one day. Well, the way it's going, lots. The USA stuff kicking off as well. A few of the guys are going over there for that. In Louisiana, late this month. And that's actually American pool, isn't it? But play, play to these rules. These rules, yeah. On a, on a table with the bigger balls. Yeah. Just under hit that. That was the key shot to the frame, and now he might have to go back up there. But, and obviously, ideally, he could he could have rerouted, but the ball he's now going to take would be part of his reroute that he'd want to play later because he could use that ball to play off the red and free the pocket up. But he's got to play that ball now just to come down for these three this end of the table so he has got to play that one he's nearest to the right hand corner so I would probably he's probably going to leave it to last but the perfect ball would be to use the one above the black just screw this one in off the side cushion and you're guaranteed to leave the angle just to play a nice little stun shot off the left hand side cushion and back up that's still an option because I think the yellow above it goes bottom left, so you've got a couple of pockets for that. But I think he's going to try and get straighter on this to then play it off the next one. But he's not straight enough, so he's going to have to play the shot that I've played. But because he's tried to get straight, he's not got enough angle to make that shot comfortable. So this shot's a little bit harder than if he was a bit closer to the, to the racking line. I'll tell you something I noticed um, with some of the, the newer players is when they strike a pot of ball, when they leave the table, they leave their bridge hand on the table and pick their cue up off it and then walk away from the table, which is something I don't really see snooker players doing. Nobody's sort of my era of, of playing does, but it's, a, it's, it's 
I think seven or eight of them do it. Yeah, maybe it's because I don't want to drag their fingers across the nap. You know, it looks horrendous. I noticed Tom, actually, when I played him, the table was full of finger marks. So he obviously drags his fingers back. You can see here, Josh did leave it a little bit short, but he's played a, he's played a good pot. Um, he's just got to find another... I don't think, I think this is quite tricky, actually. He might be drifting into the red. If he's avoiding the red... Well, if he avoids it on the way up, he's got to play with a bit of left-hand side to come back down, or does he play with right and try yeah. and come on the other side? Because you go with left, you can go behind the other one, or exactly. you can go in off. I don't know if it goes to the corner. If it does, he can just stun into the red. Yeah, I it, think does. it does. Yeah. Well, that would probably be a relief for Josh. Yeah. He didn't really want to be going on down the table there. Well, Josh Kane now gets two in front of Shane Thompson. Jimmy Croxton tried to blame the China trip on, on his before speed. Came back a month before <laughs> this tournament started, I think. Bless him. This is the first layout where there's work to do. Quite a lot of work to do as well. Two clusters. That yellow may go. Cocked out in the middle. But that yellow will have to be his last ball for the black to the right centre. The reds are a no-go. And if the yellow closest to the red on the right-hand side cushion towards the top of the table, if that doesn't go past the other yellow, then it becomes even trickier because you kind of want to play that one before playing the outside one. Yeah. And he's a little bit short on this as well, so he's... Could be a reroute again. It's not ideal on the one bottom left either. You kind of screwing up the table along the along the cushion. Try to see all uh, the morning cobwebs on some of these players. I never used to like playing in in the, in the mornings. Always an evening match for me. My preference. Yeah, I mean, well, who grows up playing pool in in mornings? <laughs> not me. No one. No, should be at school. So I can't actually see how he's gonna he's gonna get these because he has to be to the left hand side of the table for his last ball, but he's got to get there off the two balls to the right. So I think he's still gone up there. If he if this yellow goes, that's a great shot. If that yellow goes, it has to go for his sake. I think it does. Yeah. I think it does. It it just slides past Sean. And if he can just miss the red. And screw onto the one nearest the hole. He may be thick enough to screw out and be on his last ball. Oh, he was straight and a bit straight, and I think he popped that off a near draw. So yeah, he's got. He's got to get. He's got to dig into this one a little bit. Yeah, but he's played these well. This is as good as he could be. Just give us an insight where he wants to be. And of course, when he did play that shot, um, where he stunned into the red, the red has sat over the middle, which has made the black more tricky. So he might have to play that as a double or to the same pocket as that one. But you can see how close that red is to the yellow. It just makes getting high enough on the double tricky. I think he's just about done it. Yeah, I think the line he's taken, he has to be close to the left-hand side cushion. I would probably dribble this in and play play the black long, to be honest. Oh wow, he was thick enough to cannon into well. the red. That could have easily gone wrong, but he's played it well. well this eight ball into the top left for a four one lead. Give himself a nice bit of breathing space between himself and Shane Thompson. In it goes. Lovely finish there from Josh Kane. Picked off like a surgeon, the main table. And Shane Thompson breaking off. He needs to get his engine fired up. He's trailing by three frames here against Josh Kane. You see he's chucked, he's queued across this quite bad. Shane is normally a very good, good breaker. Hits it pretty flush, but he had a load of left-hand side on that. Um, but he's made a ball, that's the most important thing. And I think there's a good route on reds. I 
I think that still goes. And I think the black will go as well. So if it doesn't go, you could just snip it off the yellow anyway, just creep it yeah. in and he'd still be okay. Didn't want the yellow yeah. to come out that far, that's that was yeah. That's it's now blocking him from coming down the table where he wants to get close to these four reds at the bottom. That was the only problem with playing off the red. You don't really want to be moving balls, but they probably were only half a pocket for the black. I think the red would have been okay, but the black may have been only half a pocket. Yeah. And at distance, if you don't get close to it, uh, certainly missable. And he can get to the red that's on the rail at the bottom of the table. He's got to cue this nice because he has to. S He's got to go in at pace mm. and sort of come back and just flick into that yellow that's just above the two reds. And the only way he can miss this is, is um, well, I don't think he can miss it. I think the red is perfect for a big pocket as well. He's played it s slow. Yeah, he played it well, actually. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd have played it harder. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't realise he could play it that way, to be honest. I thought, I was, um, thought he had to definitely screw it, but. He's kind of played with but running It's quite side. easy if you play that shot, Sean, it is the cue ball that could roll forward and stick to one of the reds as well if you under hit it, because you, if you had a bit of deceleration in your cue. Mm. But like you say, he did play it very well. Much needed as well from Shane. Once you start the old five ones down, it's, uh, it starts to look a bit of a, a mountain to climb to try and get back into these sort of matches. Slight angle now, just to drag the cue ball up the table. Anywhere sort of near the middle. And he's got the black into the top right. Well, down goes to black. Thompson pulls it back to 4 2. Can also tell you that Jordan Shepard is still fighting away. He won that for the last frame that we were at second to go against Tom Cooney, so that's 6 1. Seeing how it can change so quickly, though, Sean, you know, you get a dry break here and then Shane clears up and another break and finish, and all of a sudden the match is level from me 4 1 behind in a matter of a couple of minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the yellow dropped into the middle, and that gives Josh a choice of colour here for Josh. What's your preference here than the reds? Yeah, yeah, the reds. I th I obviously, we don't, we can't tell if that red goes to bottom left. The one. Um, would you play the plant or would you play the starting ball no, into the centre? I play the plant definitely. I think he's just making sure he gets the reds, and he also had the angle to come up for these two at the top. So. Yeah, I think there's different ways you can go. Um, he's just a bit short, yeah, he wanted to go up enough to clear these two at the top, but I think he can only clear one of them now, so... Unless he chucks a load of left-hand side and checks it up off the cushion. So the red I'm talking about, the one furthest to the left of the table, it only goes to the right middle, I believe. So leaving the two at the bottom is okay because of where the black is, but to get to the red to the right middle, he can't get there off these two balls that he's now going to play, I don't think, unless he lands absolutely plumb on this one, just off straight. Just gone too far. Well, he's gone quite way too far. So yeah, it's not ideal now. Um, he's probably going to have to stun this off the top cushion, right hand side cushion, with loads of right hand side, and come down and play, clear these two at the bottom next, and then just drift up off the one in the nearest the centre of the cushion. It's very tricky. 
Yeah, so he's going to play this one right hand side, then bottom right, then bottom left, and drift up for the one to the right middle. He's just put too much side on it, and he's tied that up even more. Yeah, that's made it much harder now. Well, this is now where you are chasing a finish because he may even have to go into the to the red. I don't know. Does it double from there? I wonder if there's a gap between the two yellows. Well, let's see an overhead. No. Well, I don't know. If you if you play that third, that might go. I, I think with the slide of the cushions, I, I think it might just flick into the second yellow. They don't really slide. They 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 square up off these cushions. Oh, he's look at this. Wow. That is probably one of the luckiest shots you'll ever you'll ever see, or you'll you'll see this weekend. Yeah, another look at this. He's going to go in and move the red and it's the side, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then oh, the bounce off flick. the yellow as well with the cue ball. That's incredible. Shane, and I'd love to have a picture of Shane's face yeah, right now. He'll have enjoyed that, won't he? Yeah, my God. Oh, that's, he's in off. Oh, my I don't word. know why he stunned over to play it in the in that pocket, to be honest. He could have just not, you know, cued that nice and played it in the same bag. Shane will feel that's justice. Yeah. But I, I'm with you. I don't know what, what he's thinking there, belting that ball like that. Unless he's just not feeling it. You know, but he looks like he's playing well. So, if you're not playing well, you'd rather sort of punch a ball in. But I think he would have. Uh, he should have played the little queuing shot there. So yeah, this is going four three. Shane's break, and it could be four four in in three or four minutes. Out of nowhere, really. talk about like cue action the, and the way people play Shane's got that long slow kind of forward and backwards motion a bit like a snooker player I guess um, but it's the same on every shot whether it's a, a soft shot or a or a hard shot so you can never really tell if he's gearing up for a big one or a or a soft one no that's right um, whereas I guess with me, with me I'm more a bit more stabby with it but I think that's because uh, my, I think my cue action changes because I, I used to play snooker and I was more of a slower drawback and then cue through it whereas here I'm a bit more jabbier and I just think that's that suits the game for me yeah well, we've just left that and you, pretty much that looks like 5-3 to Tom Cousins against Luke Gilbert and we're back here on the main table with Shane Thompson breaking off and it's always the way you feel like you've just got back on serve and you just hit one fairly well dry that's instant dry and you can just see that nothing's ever going to go in. Once that ball bounces off that middle jaw, you know you're doomed. Yeah. Well, Josh Kane can't say he's not had any opportunities. He could have been two or three away in front. Yeah, and I think um, either colour set is OK. Reds are better. Even if that red next to the black doesn't go, I'd still go reds. <laughs> but it will be interesting to see what he does with that ball. Can't really, can't really develop it with the red next to it. Cause it's just going to sort of push it over towards the black. It's one of them where you kind of want to remove that red first or early, and then attack the one next to it a couple of shots later. Yeah, he's just. I think he decelerated that a little bit. I'm pretty sure he tried to be more in the middle of the table. He must think it drops comfortably in the right middle. Yeah. But that, to me, that looks a little bit acute. So it would mean that he's got to get dead straight on this ball, which 
that's no good, in my opinion. He's looking to see if he goes past. Maybe it creeps off the far jaw. Well, if it does go past, then... He's laughing. Yeah, well, I thought, I'd have thought he'd have got a bit, of a bit more of a motor on. It's probably one of them where it might just go, but you'd rather find a way of getting it somewhere else. So it might be that he does end up playing it up there. But the reason he's taking so long is because he doesn't really want to play it. Well, he doesn't want to play it now <coughs> because it, to get onto the next red, he'll have to play it with a little bit of pace. And he'd, he'd ideally want rid of that red that's to the left of him and be there now. So he could just dribble it into that corner if it does go. So he's going to just pull this back a bit. He wants to be dead straight. Ooh, oh, he's gone a bit much. Way too much. And he's quite... You either want to be dead straight or just to the left of it, so you well, just if it, sit if behind it, the If it black. is that tight, you want to be as close to it as you can Absolutely. because it just makes this a lot more missable. Nice. Oh, yeah, Drive the bus through the there. Yeah. Well, this black now for Josh Kane. Get back. Two in front. The dry break proving costly for Shane Thompson. Just when he thought he was going to get back level. You know, that, that isn't really a natural place to put it. So maybe he's choosing to do the same thing. Just put it to the side, just slightly to the side. Well, Josh's turn to go dry on the break. Yeah, and actually these reds are quite nice because he can he can clear this one now, come down, um, and just get try and get to that red to the right hand side of the table as quick as possible. And it's just it's gone wrong already. It's a little bit unlucky. Yeah, oh, I don't know if he can come off the left hand side cushion with a bit of right. I mean that's side. annoying. I mean the start of you finish the first ball you pot and you immediately stuck to a ball in the middle of the table with nowhere to go. And it's not as though yellows are in a really bad position. It's one that's on that right hand rail. That's the only awful one. And you feel that Josh will have a good go at trying to remove it from there should he get to the table, which you kind of think he will. Oh, it's a group. It's a great effort. He's got it. Oh, super shot there from Shane Thompson. I'm not sure he specifically played the skill shot, you know, trying no. to lose, remove the yellow, but he just wanted to go into it and get it, get it away from the pocket. Yeah, that's a nice double. Very good shot. Yeah, that's... Uh, so now back to where we were. Top yeah. Well, he's Obviously, these, these... Well, those two at the top of the table are your last two, ideally. So if you can screw this back enough, that's right. So he's... Didn't know if he could leave it thick enough to play the red to the left-hand corner, but it looks like he can. And then he's probably going to have to just take a, take his medicine and leave a longish red to the top right, and then you, then your work is done. Oh, he's missed it. He did. He hit it a bit chunky. Yeah. Just been a bit untidy. Still 13 minutes left on the match clock. But we'll be heading towards the old 15 seconds in the shot very shortly. Nice shot there from Josh Kane. Flirted a little bit with that middle bag with the cue ball, but he now has an opportunity to get himself on the hill. And one away from winning a match. Shouldn't be any problems here, Sean, for Josh. No. Um, 
The only problem is if he plays the yellow to bottom left last, it just means he's got to play half a shot just to get on the black to the top left. But he probably will. Yeah, he's look, you can see there he's just going to leave a the angle just to stun over. So I think he's got any choice because if he, if he played it after this ball, he's, he's got the same shot to get on the yellow. Yeah. Pretty much. And that's pretty good. Yeah, he can pick his line now. You can either leave it um, the right-hand side of the yellow and just come across or try and screw over to the left-hand side cushion. Little bounce and then um, stun over. Doesn't want to be... Well, he's going to play it to the middle. I keep forgetting about the middles. <laughs> just got one of them funny angles where he's kind of screwing to the to the corner bag I think well can he is it straighter than that what's your commentator's eye say well yeah he's just straight enough up. yeah yeah I know what you mean with those shots where you think I don't want to get hold of this too much I'll screw in straight into the corner mm. pocket and you don't want to be short either so having to play thin cuts but he's played it well in goes the black, and Josh Kane is just one frame away from progressing. Get rid of that yellow. I think he's going to be getting over the line. Shane Thompson, though, desperate for a ball off the break. Yeah, and nothing's, nothing's really going right for Shane, is it? No, it's been the story of his, his morning, really, Sean. But you can see there he's, he's gone from the middle of the table. He's queued down on the ball. He's got a little bit of a jump. Yeah. Um, so I think there is something in that. There's been a few dry breaks in this match. Josh dry broke last time and then Shane sort of, you know, his first shot, he played a loose one, then played an incredible double, then missed a pot down in the bottom corner. So it's, like I said before, it's it's been just a little bit untidy from Shane. I feel like whoever got through this match is going to have to up their game a little bit if they're going to go deep into the tournament. Yeah, and I think this is obviously only their... I don't know if they had a, any of them had a prelim, but, you know, they still feel like they're, they're starting the tournament, starting the weekend. Um, so they'll both be anxious to, to play well and get the first win. So there's that to play, that that part to play as well. Well, we're down to 15 seconds of shot. Yeah, Shane Thompson did play a match before. Josh Chain was already in this round. He drew Tom Ford, and obviously he wasn't here. Yeah. Well, just one decent positional shot here, Sean, and it should be good night. Yeah, he's going to play this one. It's obviously thick enough, yeah. Just got to sort of dig into it. And he's just got to play a nice little... Um, make sure he gets the gap. Yeah, blue spot will be perfect. Yeah, and it's easy to. Ooh. It's so easy to to just run out of position on these tables. You know, I was I didn't want to call it straight away because I know how tricky they are to just land, pinpoint. Yeah. You know, and when you've been playing on the other tables, which Josh has, oh, he's fluked it. Oh my word, that is an incredible finish in that match. Well, Josh Kane, and he's smiling. I mean, and so he should be. Well, that's an incredible shot. Well, let's have another look. He's completely in trouble. The clock's going down. He thinks, I'm just going to give this a blast. So look at that. Eight ball cannons off two yellows into the middle bag. And it's Josh Kane that wins the match.